This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and yay, it's the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, the high-end fabulicious phablet for 2018, if we still bother calling big screen phones phablets. Anyway, yeah, you know, Samsung, the ones that have a headphone jack and otherwise known as the Fortnite phone because Samsung is getting the exclusive on Fortnite for, you know, a short period of time before other Android headsets get it. Get it. We're going to look at it now. The Note 9 is an evolutionary phone. Still, there's some important changes here and things you should know in case you're also thinking about the Galaxy S9 Plus. This one obviously has the S Pen. If you're totally not into the S Pen, including its new remote control feature, then you might as well consider a Galaxy S9 Plus. This does have a little bit bigger display, though. It's 6.4 inches versus 6.3 inches. Same resolution, same awesome OLEDness, but a little bit higher quality display because Samsung just keeps getting better and better at making these displays. They both have curved displays but this one has less of a curve so if you find a little bit of distortion as the glass wraps around the edges on, on that infinity display you might like the Note 9 better. It also has a new so-called water carbon cooling system. Well, what you can see if you take it apart, and folks like Jerry Rig Everything have done that, is a much larger copper heat sink inside. Nobody has found any water or carbon in there, other than the fact that many things are comprised of carbon in the universe. But still, it's supposed to help it run a little cooler than the Note 8 and some of the predecessors. I can tell you that when playing a game like Fortnite, it doesn't get hot to the touch. Often smartphones, high-end ones with high-resolution displays and fast CPUs do get pretty hot. This one seems to run a little bit cooler and also when using it for GPS navigation in the car, especially in our Texas hot sunny summers, it gets a little bit less hot than the usual frighteningly hot that many of today's phones do, including the Galaxy S9 Plus. So the phone has stereo speakers, yay, one at the top and one at the bottom, and they're not that loud, it's decent, but the sound is very full, and of course it has a ubiquitous USB-C jack. Now, speaking of USB-C, I want to thank our sponsors for this video, Volta and the Volta XL cable. So they're the people that make the USB-C cables, lightning, and micro USB with the interchangeable magnetic tips, a lifetime warranty, which is a good thing, because even expensive cables from Apple tend to fail, and they're kind of a feel-good company too, because up to 40% of their their proceeds go to charity, which is cool. Even though Apple killed MagSafe, it's alive in spirit here with SnagSafe. Since their cable tips are magnetic, if you yank on the cable, you can see it's just going to disconnect it and it's not going to bring your Mac falling to the floor or your smartphone too. These cables are available for the regular Volt with micro USB, USB-C, and lightning tips. So you buy a bunch of different tips, but only one nylon braided rugged cable. Good times. So the new one here that we're here to talk about, and they've got an Indiegogo campaign and they're going to be productizing it very soon, is the Volta XL, which supports laptop charging USB-C power delivery. So obviously your 15-inch MacBook Pro because it does up to 87 watts of charging, your HP Spectre X360, Samsung Notebook 9, all your USB-C laptops. The cameras now are the same as that from the S9 family, so that's a good thing. And you get the AI camera, which is pretty much scene detection, which we've seen for years on point-and-shoot cameras and consumer-oriented digital SLR cameras, and somewhat on phones, too. Some people have said they thought it was kind of slow, but no, it's fine. I haven't had any problems with it, and it seems to do a fine job. Basically, if it's food, it tries to amplify the colors a little bit. If it's a landscape, it amplifies the blues and the greens, it warm tones. If it's a person's face, you get the idea. The Note 9 and the Note family in general have always been the power user phone, the mostest and the bestest. So this time they're doing it with storage. Okay, it may be crazy and it may be expensive, well over $1,000 when you go for that 512 gig of storage option, but this is one of the few phones that gives you a half a terabyte of internal storage and you have a micro SD card slot, so you can have an up to a 512 gig micro SD card. You could have a terabyte in your pocket. The base model, which is $1,000, yikes, is... 128 gigs of storage, which is more normal, but still, at least that's pretty adequate for the price. The Note series has never been cheap. Last year's model was around $950 for the list price, so we've gone up about $50. And this and the iPhone 10 are the ones that are really blowing market pricing away and pushing these high price envelopes. I mean, this is as much as you pay for a premium Ultrabook. In the U.S., we get lavender and ocean blue. Okay, it's kind of like gender cliche thing, the blue and the pink one, right? Overseas, folks also have black and a nifty copper color to choose from. I really was surprised that we don't get the black as an option in the United States, but, well, we don't. As ever, this is a glass 
foam front and back Gorilla Glass 5, but it seems fairly durable and it's so far past the many abuse tests that we see on the web coming from places like Jerry Rig Everything, Square Trade, and all that sort of thing. But still, it's giant, it's glass, you're going to want a case, you're going to want to protect it. So let's talk about the sameness. And if you put the Note 9 next to the Note 8 from the front, you certainly wouldn't be able to tell the difference. From the back, you can, because they have moved the fingerprint scanner below the camera, thankfully. Not just because you're not going to accidentally put your fingers all over the camera when you're reaching for the fingerprint scanner, but because it makes for at least a slightly easier reach on the back when you're reaching for that fingerprint scanner. That said, if you're wondering why didn't they put the fingerprint scanner even lower, well, because the big battery is there, so they have to work around that battery. The size, the shape, the curves, they're almost identical. That squared off design, which is certainly a lot squarer than the Galaxy S9 family of phones. I find it less comfortable in the hand, less kind of curved just to fit in your hand in an ideal way, but oh well, there's that. That hasn't changed at all. The display resolution is the same as the Note 8. Again, they have improved the quality of the OLED display. The color gamut is always improving. The color accuracy is also always improving. And the color temperature adjustments are getting better. And I can tell you one thing, that once I had the Galaxy S9 Plus in hand, my Note 8 looked a little... Eh, not as exciting anymore than the screen. So now the Note 9 really is coming back and achieving feature parity with the S9 family. With Samsung, you never know. One series is always playing catch up with the other. In this case, it's the Note 9 catching up with the Galaxy S9 family. Now you have the dual 12 megapixel rear cameras with the dual aperture lens feature. The dual aperture lens was something that Samsung added with the Galaxy S9 family, and that gives you better bokeh effects when you're using the telephoto lens. Again, you get the better display quality that you see on the S9 family of phones and the relocated fingerprint scanner. And for me, one of the most important things is the improved facial recognition. The Note 8 was always slow and not great in good light and not great for eyeglass wearers. The S9 was a big leap forward. And with the Note 9, now we have, it uses hybrid recognition. There's facial recognition plus iris recognition. It's pretty fast, not an iPhone 10 level fast still, but it's pretty darn fast. It certainly is usable now, and I get few occasions where it just refuses to recognize me. Of course, we get the Snapdragon 845 this year as the latest, greatest, fastest CPU. I don't think anybody with a Note 8 is going to say, oh, my Snapdragon 835 just felt so slow. That was also a very fast CPU. And for those of you who are outside of the United States, most countries are going to have the Exynos 9810 CPU instead, which is a fine CPU as well. The S Pen itself is unchanged from the Note 8 other than the fact that, well, now it's yellow, which makes it harder to lose, probably. It's easier to see and looks cool. Still has that 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity, but they've added a Bluetooth radio to the pen, and it has a little super capacitor inside the pen that recharges when it's in the silo to keep the Bluetooth charged. You do not need any pen charge to use the pen. The display provides the power for the active digitizer in this, but the Bluetooth functionality is for basically remote control. Remote control selfie is actually kind of a handy feature. You can use it to control and advance your PowerPoint presentation. Oh, that's exciting, isn't it? I don't know. Like, as, you know, I'd like to see what you folks think about how exciting that feature is. Of course, if you do like note taking, obviously the note is the one and only phone for you because that's really where it stands out as being unique versus other phones. 4,096 levels of pressure, Wacom EMR digitizer. Artists know and love Wacom EMR as being one of the best, the most natural and fluid feeling in terms of pen on paper kind of feeling. Also, it supports tilt. If you're an artist, you're going to have a lot of fun with this as a pocket sketchbook. I know I always do. And there's enough Android art programs out there that are fun enough to play with that keeps me pretty happy. Infinite Painter is one of my favorites right now. It has the other creature comforts you'd expect from a high-end phone, and we had them also in the Note 8 as well, and in the Galaxy S9 family, which includes IP68 water resistance, wireless charging, NFC with Samsung Pay support inside. And of course, the GPS with GLONASS, all those usual things, Wi-Fi, 802.11ac, everything you'd expect from a high-end phone. Alas, we still have the Bixby button, and it's still unmappable to some other function that you can disable if you want. And Bixby, as ever, is Samsung's probably unnecessary alternative to Google Assistant, which is such a fine voice-activated assistant that it's hard to imagine you feeling like you really needed something else. But if there, are, I know there are some Bixby fans out there, so happy you, you got Bixby. 
This also supports Samsung DeX, so if you want to plug it in USB-C to HDMI cable, you can try to turn this into a desktop. Uh, Samsung's been pushing this with their tablets, Galaxy Tab S4, for example, as well, and I'm not so sure that people are sold on this. We've seen this done again and again in the ancient days by Motorola, and then we saw this with Windows Phone as well. Yeah. The phone is sold by all major carriers, and you can also buy it unlocked. We are using the unlocked version here, so no carrier bloatware on board. Oddly enough, usually with most phone manufacturers, the unlocked version is the first one to get OS updates, OS version updates, major OS version updates. But in the case of Samsung, usually it's the carrier phones that get it first. Go figure. I mean, Samsung is not too fast at doing software updates either. My, much as I love the, the Note 9, uh, I don't expect to see Android 9.0 on this Pi anytime soon. So we're at Oreo 8.1, even though Pi just came out a couple of weeks ago and is available on Pixel phones, the Essential phone, and a few others. So the camera on the Note 8 wasn't much of a slouch, that's for sure. It's quite a good camera, and this one, like I said, brings it up to the S9, S9 Plus level of performance. One of the best camera phones on the market, the Pixel 2 family of phones, the Pixel 2 XL, the iPhone 10 for daylight shots is also very good, and this one is really the king for nighttime shots. Samsung has been doing a very good job for that. So if you take a lot of photos at night, if you like to take club photos, concert photos, that sort of thing, it's noticeably, noticeably better than the iPhone 10. Of course, there'll be a new iPhone coming out any day now, so we'll have to see what happens with that. But versus the Pixel 2, it really, it holds its own really nicely. So that's a Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Yes, I am a Samsung Note lover, and I admit it, but still, I have to say every year it keeps getting better, as it should, and even better, this probably won't be one of the exploding ones like the Note 7, so you get to keep it and hold on to it for an entire year, much as we did with the Note 8. Yes, it's evolutionary rather than revolutionary, but they're doing the right things. They're giving us higher capacity battery. The remote feature for the S Pen, it's kind of a gimmick. I'd like to hear in the comments how useful you think of it. Getting the cameras from the S9 family is a big win and the better display, so that's nice. I no, no longer feel like the Note is a second-class citizen to the supposed lesser Galaxy S9 series. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.